early period of NFL free agency has been absolutely crazy so far. It's really just been a day. Less than 24 hours, and we have a wild shakeup of the NFL. We're going to talk about that today, team by team, briefly. And we'll start with the Buffalo Bills. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more NFL and college football content. And we'll start with the Bills. So they had a very interesting start. I don't think anything was too crazy. They just kept you know, the big pieces of their team together. Deion Dawkins is one of the better left tackles in the league. He gets a three-year, $16.5 million extension. It's fine money. It really is. I think people tend to overreact to some of these contracts, and some of them are crazy. We'll get to those in a minute. But as the salary cap goes up, and especially this year where it really went up above all projections, there's more money to pay these guys, and they typically do get more money and for one of the better tackles in the league, right, maybe five or 10 years ago, 20 million a year would seem absolutely absurd. Here, however, it's extremely reasonable for, again, one of the better offensive tackles in the league. Mitch Trubisky is your backup QB. I liked bringing back Daquan Jones. He's a good interior player for them. AJ Epineza kind of continues to develop. Two years worth up to 20 million. We don't have the full details on these things. It's probably incentivized. I'm not sure it's just going to be a flat $10 million salary, right? So we'll have to see what some of these contracts end up looking like. But people are going to be down on the bills. Oh, they didn't do this, didn't do that. They were able to restructure Von Miller. That gives them a little bit more flexibility. We'll see what they're able to do throughout the rest of free agency. But the bills are already a good team. Losing Gabe Davis, I don't care about really. And, of course, you had to make sacrifices. You got rid of Jordan Poyer. You got rid of Tredavious White. You can be down on the Bills because they're losing some talent, but a lot of those players are older and have a history of injury and have lost a step, quite frankly. So I think they're going to be replaceable. They're big names, so it's a tough pill to swallow. But I really, I'm okay with where the Bills are right now. The Miami Dolphins, I thought, had a very nice start to free agency. John U. Smith, two years, 10 mil. You know, that's not going to blow you away. It's John U. Smith. He's a move tight end. He's an H-back type player. But I think Mike McDaniel is going to be able to creatively use him. It's a nice option to have. Think about the way, you know, the Titans were able to use Chigazimo Conquo this past season. John U. Smith can do similar things. And then Aaron Brewer. Aaron Brewer is one of the more underrated players in the league, probably. He had a great season with Tennessee. Uh, you know, for an under-the-radar guy, I'm not claiming he's one of the best centers in the league, but three years, 21 mil for your starting center, that's not so bad. Yeah, you're losing Connor Williams, Hookham Horns, of course. That's sad. He's a really good player. He's really developed. But Aaron Brewer is a fine replacement. I think I'd be fairly excited about that based on his play in Tennessee. Going from, you know, team to team, scheme to scheme can be a little bit different sometimes. Different responsibilities, different calls, especially for a center. New chemistry with the new quarterback, especially, you know, maybe you're, you're snapping. I mean, I guess if you're, if you're snapping it back, it's whether two is a lefty doesn't really have a ton of bearing on that probably. But, you know, you got to build chemistry with a new quarterback and get more reps and experience. So there could be some growing pains. But Aaron Brewer is a pretty good player, in my opinion. Jack Barrett, one-year contract worth up to $9 million. Again, we don't have the full details, but with incentives, it's... it's Probably not $9 million for one year, but it can be if he reaches certain sack thresholds as a pro bowler, if they make the Super Bowl, win the division. Depending on how the contract's shaped up, a, you know, a number of those things would not surprise me. Jack Barrett, I think, could still be productive. They need more edge depth. You lose Andrew Van Ginkle to the Vikings, I'm fine with this. Still probably end up bringing in another edge rusher somewhere along the lines of, uh, of this offseason. Jordan Brooks, three years, $30 million. He's really becoming one of the better linebackers in the league. Not in that top, top upper echelon conversation, but still quite a good player. Three years, $30 million, I think is pretty reasonable. Anthony Walker on a one-year deal. He is a good vet, locker room leader type player. They said that about him in Indianapolis and Cleveland and really not mad about it. And they brought Nick Needham back as well. The Patriots. Maybe the most surprising team for me in free agency so far because they were able to bring back players I just didn't think they'd have any chance to bring back. Like Michael Onwenu, like Hendrick Bourne. I guess that, that one's not like totally out of the uh, realm of possibility. Hunter Henry is a very good re-sign for them. Jacoby Brissett is 
probably their starting quarterback next year, at least for some time. If they draft a QB at three the way we expect them to currently, that guy could come in right away. But Brissett does give you decent starter possibilities. Like, he's not a game changer, but he's good enough to win games with if the team around him is good enough, which it isn't in the case of the Patriots. But they were able to bring back big-time starting tight end, Hunter Henry, three years, 27 mil. That could be up to 30 million. That's reasonable. Anwenu is one of the best overall linemen in the league. I'm not sure if he's going to play tackle for the Patriots or be a guard, but either way, he has flexibility. He's played a number of those spots and has done so at a high level. Three years, 57 million, I think is an extremely fair deal. 57 million based on what some of these other players were getting, especially AAV wise, you know, average per year, way more than Michael Anwenu. I thought this was a really good contract to keep in with the Patriots. And they got Sione Takitaki. Taki Taki is a nice player. Really broke out with the Browns. He's going to be a good addition for them. And they were able to keep Kyle Duggar, who's kind of like that hybrid safety linebacker. Really nice player. Antonio Gibson, three-year, $11 million deal. Kind of hybrid running back receiver. We'll see how they decide to use him. Maybe that means less catches for Ramondre Stevenson. Antonio Gibson a little bit better in that department as a receiver. Ramondre had a, you know, a decent run, though. Love to see what that playtime is. People are down on the Jets. I can see why. They haven't really done very much up to this point. Tyrod Taylor to be your backup. They needed a more reliable backup. Two years, 18 million is fine. He's a really solid backup quarterback. I think he's in that same realm with like a Jacoby Brissett that we just talked about. John Simpson, maybe will compete to be a starter. We'll have to see what happens there. Not really a big needle mover for me. And then Isaiah Oliver got brought in. He's depth at corner. Not sure that he's going to be a starter, but he's fine. And then they brought back Greg the Leg on a two-year, $8.5 million deal. I think that's fine. He was really good last year. So it certainly makes sense to want to bring him back. But then things get really spicy in the AFC North. The Ravens have done a lot in some ways. The Bengals have been all over the map. Let's talk about the Ravens first. Derrick Henry, two years. 16 million total max value of 20 million with 9 million guaranteed i do think the wheels are kind of falling off the bus for derrick henry so to speak he definitely is not the same player that we know him to be the usage was just so high he could only really remain at that level for so long but going to baltimore in an awesome awesome run offense derrick henry has a chance to be very good again for another year or two. I think two years is perfect for him because that way you're not really trapped with the contract. and You can still get maybe another productive year out of him in 2024. That rush offense with Lamar Jackson and hopefully Keaton Mitchell coming back healthy, it's really exciting. Nelson Aguilar back in a one-year deal. They need receiver depth. Aguilar's fine. And then the big one is not letting Justin Matabike go. Four years, 98 million. And based on some of the other contracts that got handed out yesterday, as I record this, and hopefully you see this on the 12th of March, this ends up being a steal in terms of total value. Now, he did get the non-exclusive franchise tag. They were able to work out a deal. It's very favorable for one of the better interior defensive linemen in the NFL. And he's very young. Just truly breaking out. Justin Matabike has potential to be one of the better interior defensive lineman when I say bet I mean like top two or three in the league over the next four or five years so that's going to be something that's very interesting to monitor very good player true breakout season in 2023 sky is the limit for Justin Matabike for the Cincinnati Bengals well a lot happened they cut and then they didn't cut they traded Joe Mixon to the Houston Texans T. Higgins got the franchise tag, but has requested a trade, and oftentimes when players request a trade, nothing happens, but T. Higgins could certainly end up being traded. They got Zach Moss on a two-year, $8 million deal. I like this way better than paying Joe Mixon. Zach Moss is very cheap and a good player. I don't know if you guys really follow along with Zach Moss in 2023. But he enjoyed a very, very good season for the Colts. And if you look at just the pure numbers here, did you think that Zach Moss would have rushed for anywhere close to 800 yards in 2023? 
kind of wild. Did that in 14 games on 183 attempts as, you know, a starting running back at times. Zach Moss was in the top of the league in rushing yards for a stretch. Wild. 4.3 yards per carry. Pretty decent. Not amazing. But he should be a very nice fit in Cincinnati. Mike Kosicki. Perfect fit for Cincinnati. Good receiving tight end. They've been missing that. Brought back their blocking tight end, Drew Sample. Brought back depth on the O-line and Cody Ford. And then, this is the real interesting one. Geno Stone, two years, $15 million with a $6 million signing bonus. Geno Stone, his first true season of, of really producing and being good. A lot of interceptions for Geno Stone. And we'll see what happens with the Bengals. Obviously going to play for a division rival. Always interesting. Not the last of that we'll see in the AFC North. Be very, very interesting. But Geno Stone, big ball hawking potential. We'll see what he looks like in Cincinnati. If he's truly as good as the numbers say last year, this is a great deal for both him and the Bengals because you're not locked in long term, but the Bengals can get a you know, really good value for a couple of years. I don't want to overrate Geno Stone, but he has potential to be quite a good player. And then the Cleveland Browns, also pretty active. Unfortunately, lost Sione Taki Taki, but did get Jerry Judy for a fifth and sixth round pick this year. Now, Jerry Judy is obviously not an amazing player. He's not the first round caliber guy when he was coming out of the draft, the Broncos drafted, and we thought, okay, this guy's going to be one of the better route runners in the league. But his flaws have really been highlighted in the NFL. Struggles against press, struggles in contested catch situations, and really just doesn't have overall the best hands to begin with. That represents a tough combo. With the Browns, you'd like to get him in the slot a bit more, but you already have Elijah Moore. I'm curious here what Jerry Judy's production actually looks like in 2024 with the Browns. Brought in Michael Dunn to be depth on the O-line, and then we're able to bring back to Darius Smith, two years, $23.5 million. You know, into his 30s now, still a very solid player. They could bring in, you know a big speed pass rusher in the draft, maybe like Muhammad Kamara could be interesting. You know, Zedaria Smith is your prototypical like base 4-3 defensive end. Miles Garrett is obviously just the freakiest edge on the planet. But getting in like a true designated pass rusher, obviously you're looking for a, a Bryce Huff type of player. He's not available, but that would be nice for the Browns on third downs over Zedaria Smith. Maybe they can slide him inside. But as far as just base 4-3 defensive ends, he is one of the better ones in the league. And at two years, $23.5 million, I think that's pretty good. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers. The surprise of free agency so far was Patrick Queen not going to the Seahawks or sticking with the Ravens. He goes to the Steelers like very recently, moments ago really as I record this, three years, $41 million. Queen does have his flaws. And with Roquan Smith... The Ravens were really able to get some awesome play out of him. He's a really nice blitzer. Obviously very athletic. Has been limited in space at times. Coverage feel hasn't always been the best. Taking on blocks hasn't always been the best. He's not really like your prototypical Mike linebacker. He's got to be, you know, ideally a weak side linebacker. And the Steelers is an interesting fit. Again, I'm really intrigued to see how well he's going to play. Obviously, going from the Ravens to the Steelers, you got some bad blood there. And then Russell Wilson plans to sign with the Steelers. I think it's it's quite clear that Russell Wilson is not Seahawks MVP candidate for the first uh, you know half of the season type player. Wasn't particularly good with the Broncos. I know you can look at the numbers, touchdown to interception ratio, and like wow, Russell Wilson's back. It probably also thought Carson Wentz was great when he had that great touchdown to interception ratio a couple of years ago, despite being horrendous. Russell Wilson can be good though, and that's a big improvement over what the Steelers had because Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett, those guys really can't be that good. You know, Mitchell Trubisky was even there for a little bit over the past couple of years. Russell Wilson can at least be serviceable, and with the talent already in place on the Steelers roster. We know they're a playoff team. I think Russell Wilson solidifies that. If he can stay healthy and produce, the Steelers, they have a chance. Are they going to be a Super Bowl contending team? Probably not, but they've got a chance. If you can get into the playoffs, you never know. And I think the Steelers will be a playoff team. In the AFC South, 
Joe Mixon traded from the Bengals to the Texans. Don't have the full details on what the compensation is, but I can tell you it's not likely to be much. They were going to cut him. It might be a sixth or a seventh round pick, maybe even a pick swap. It's not going to be significant, would be my assumption. Joe Mixon's still good. He's definitely lost a step. I know he, he produced. That's fine. He's lost a step, but Texans lose Devin Singletary. Damian Pierce was really disappointing last year. Who knows, maybe in, in year two in this new system, he's going to be better. But was really disappointing last year. I think you did need to get another running back in the mix. In. And Joe Mixon's a good option to do that. They brought back Dalton Schultz three years, 36 million. People were down on the Texans free agency so far. I think they've really crushed it. Schultz is a really solid starting tight end. And Danico Autry is one of the more underrated players in the league. Gets two years, 20 million. Danico Autry is your prototypical hybrid 3-4 defensive end. He's inside-outside versatile. He had 11 and a half sacks last year, and those are not fluke numbers. And historically for Danico Autry in this, you know, past you know, few years of breakout for him, he's been more impactful than the numbers say, and he's been very, very productive as that hybrid inside-outside defensive lineman. Really, really good player, and I think a huge addition into the D'Amico Ryan's defense. I love D'Amico Autry. He is older. He's been in the league since 2014. He wasn't a young rookie to my recollection. I think he's 34 years old right now. So this is someone that is old, could potentially lose a step, but his game is not predicated on being supremely athletic, and he is still a really good athlete. I love the Danico Autry signing. He's going to be more impactful than the numbers say. We know with interior defensive linemen like Danico Autry is often, we can't just look at pure numbers and say, okay, production-wise, that's how good they are. The guy with more sacks is a better player. It's just not the case. But this creates more opportunities for guys like Will Anderson Jr., whoever the next edge up is with the loss of Jonathan Grenard, which obviously stings, but Autry is a great addition into this team. Aziz Alshire teaming back up with D'Amico Ryans. Former 49ers linebacker was so great for them. Goes to Tennessee. Now is back with D'Amico Ryans in Houston. I love the fit. Three years, $34 million. He is going to be worth every penny. Teaming up with Christian Harris, I think, is awesome. Mike Ford is, and Lonnie Johnson, really. Cornerback depth. Jeff Okuda, I like. One year, $4.25 million. That can go up to six. Jeff Okuda was not too bad if I recall last season for the Falcons. Yes, we kind of view him as a bust. Drafted by the Lions, but moved around a little bit since then. You know, it is what it is, but he could be solid and gives you some versatility. I, maybe they even try him in the nickel or at safety. That could be interesting. They still need a true CB2. I'm not sure that Jeff Okuda is going to be that guy, but it's a good fit in D'Amico Ryan's defense, and you still have potential there. Then, of course, you bring back Kaimi Fairbairn. He's a solid kicker. Can't get mad about that. Colts were able to bring back Michael Pittman. Of course, he was franchise tagged, but then three years, 70 million. Monster extension, but Pittman's really becoming one of the better receivers in the league, and he's worth this type of money. The Colts really needed to get better on offense, and by not losing Michael Pittman, they take a big step in the right direction because that would have been a monster loss, especially for a young and developing quarterback in Anthony Richardson. You could still take a quarterback at number 15 in the draft, or not a quarterback, a wide receiver at number 15 in the draft for your young quarterback in Anthony Richardson. And the young receiving group of, will include Michael Pittman Jr., first extension, Josh Downs in the slot, Alec Pierce is your fourth receiver, ideally in a deep threat, and then somebody that you draft in there as potentially your number two or three. That starts to become a pretty solid group. And I like the Colts' potential in 2024 to compete for that division. It's going to be tough to beat the Texans, though. They, they're they on a heater. The Jags, if they can stay consistent, the AFC South should finally be a really fun division to watch. Things are moving in the right direction there. I would like bringing back Zaire Franklin. Three years, $31 million feels like a lot, but it's just the way contracts are going. They're going to get more and more expensive every year. $10 million a year for Zaire Franklin really isn't that bad. Again, we have to remember that salary cap continues to go up. These contracts are going to look crazy. 
but they're not actually so crazy. Some of them, again, are crazy. We'll get to them. For the Jags, Mac Jones traded for a sixth round pick. He's a backup. We know Trevor Lawrence has had some injury problems, has played through those injuries to his credit, but Mac Jones at least gives you an option if Trevor Lawrence has something a little bit more serious. Back home in Jacksonville for Mac Jones. I'm not moved. I'm not ready for Maxonville. Let me just say that. Gabe Davis, three years, $39 million. If you've watched any of my mock drafts talking about the Bills, or really the Bills rebuild, anything Bills related, when Gabe Davis comes up, I'm not moved. However, his addition to Jacksonville, I think is nice. Because he's not a wide receiver too, but here he doesn't have to be. You have Zay Jones, you have Christian Kirk, you're working to bring back Calvin Ridley. You have some options. Gabe Davis is a solid deep threat. Is he worth three years, $39 million? It's not so bad. I probably would have preferred to get in position for a receiver in the draft, but now you don't really have to. Gabe Davis is a solid deep threat. A little bit more money than I probably would have extended had I been in a position, but I'm not. So I yield to Trent Baalke in this situation. Blake Hance, O-line depth. Ezra Cleveland's able to come back. They traded for him three years, $28.5 million with $14.5 million guaranteed. He's been a solid player. Gives you, I, w- I would say, depth on the O-line in case somebody gets injured because he has played tackle in a pinch. Not been great there. But, um, you know, starting left guard, right? That's probably what Ezra Cleveland's going to be. Also, I played Counter-Strike with him last night in Graham Glasgow. I know that's an interesting group. Um, yeah, me, Wheels on YouTube, Graham Glasgow, Ezra Cleveland, and uh, their buddy was, it w- that was a five stack for us on Counter-Strike too. Very interesting. Nice guy. Uh, Mitch Morse. Love this. Center was such a problem for Jacksonville with Luke Fortner. Mitch Morse, we know what he is. He's a solid starter and he's getting nothing. Two years, 10 and a half million. That's awesome. Mitch Morse is solid. Has been, you know, a solid center for a while now. With the Chiefs and with the Bills and now uh, just working his way around the country. Maybe he goes out west. So, yeah, down to the southeast here with the Jags. I like it. And then Josh Allen gets franchise tagged. He's going to end up getting a monster contract. Everyone's talking about the Brian Burns deal. $30 million, Oh, my God. Josh Allen's going to get $30 million. It, When he gets extended, it's going to be in that range. I would certainly bet it. And then Darnell Savage. He got a lot of money. I thought it was something in the neighborhood of of $39 million or something close to that on a three-year deal. Let's get the exact details. It's actually only 21 over three. Yet, like, Darnell Savage is, like, a fine player. He's, like, borderline replacement level, former first-round pick, good athlete. You know, we, we tend to value those guys, but never really was all that great with the Packers. He was fine at times and not really moving in the right direction. Maybe he's just a better fit with Jacksonville. We'll have to see what happens. But yeah, three years, $21 million is actually, you know, not all that bad. Signing bonus, only $5 million, only 12 and a half guaranteed at signing it and total. So this is a fine contract. They have an easy out after 2025. You're really not locked in here at all. It's a two-year deal, essentially, if they want it to be. No problem there at all. And then the Titans, of course, you lose your starting center and then you bring one in. Now, I talked to my buddy AJ Schulte about this. Um, Good follow on Twitter. Because I saw this Lloyd Cushenberry deal, and I'm like, wow, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Four years, 50 million. That's top five center money about for Lloyd Cushenberry, who I, when I watched him a couple years ago, I was not impressed. But I didn't, you know, I haven't done any Broncos offensive line study in the past year. I I yield to the experts. And I ask, I go, hey, what's the deal with Lloyd Cushenberry? And apparently he played very well or or better in a contract year. Got paid. New starting center for the Titans. Congrats to Lloyd Cushenberry. That's a lot of money. And hopefully he plays up to that contract because four years, 50 mil is a pretty rich deal for Lloyd Cushenberry. A lot of money, but see if he can earn it. And then Tony Pollard, three years, 24 million. Had a rough start to last year. Finished strong. Tony Pollard, to me, You need somebody else there. And they do have somebody else there. So, you know, you lose Derrick Henry to the Ravens, but you still have Ty J Spears, Tony Pollard, nice one-two punch at running back. 
They need some more power in there. They need a, a real true short yardage guy. We'll see if they find him in the draft or maybe he's already on the roster. But Tony Pollard, I don't mind. Three years, $24 million. This is going to be probably his career prime. And it's, you're not really locked in long-term here at all. Kenneth Murray, two years, $15.5 million. Uh, with a max value of $18 million. I'm not a big Kenneth Murray guy. He is limited as a player. Not great in coverage, in space. And that's, you know, not really the greatest Aziz Alshire replacement. I don't love that for Tennessee, personally. But they also signed Shadobi Awuzie. And I did really like this. Three years, $36 million. He's got obvious starter upside. Really nice player. Why not? And then Morgan Cox, bring back your long snapper. Love to see it. The Broncos are building a Texas team team. Malcolm Roach, hook him. Brandon Jones, hook him. PJ Locke, re-signed, hook him. Uh, Malcolm Roach has good depth on the D-line. Broncos didn't really have much of that. Brandon Jones has starter upside in the secondary. Really nice player. Michael Burton bringing your fullback back. You know, P.J. Locke's been a pretty good player for Denver. Arguably their best overall DB outside of Patrick Sertan now on the team. Justin Simmons, of course, probably going elsewhere. And then Will Lutz back with John Payton. Don't hate it. Kansas City Chiefs bring in Irv Smith. Super athletic tight end. I mean, I like him more as a second tight end. But the big one was bringing back Chris Jones. Arguably the best interior defensive lineman in the league. He gets five years close to 160 million with 101 guaranteed. It's more than the Chiefs would typically do. They're paying a lot of money to two guys, but they're, you know, trending towards a dynasty right now with Patrick Mahomes, right? So, you know, if you're going to keep the best part of your defense, I don't mind paying him. He's so good. Drew Tranquil back, three years, 19 million. He's been a nice player for him. I don't mind this either. And then LeJarius Sneed is going to get tagged and traded. He's already been tagged. Searching for a trade. He's going to be traded somewhere, it seems. So we'll have to see where that ends up being. He's going to get paid. We'll have to see again. But they're going to need to find more help at corner. I love Trent McDuffie. You have some solid other options. But I, like, do you trust Jamari Connor to be CB2? Or, I mean, they, you know, they have a number of players. Jalen Watson, Joshua Williams, of course. Shamari Connor listed at safety. I know he was like kind of the hybrid guy. I guess he's moved back to safety full time. Brought in Matt Ariza. He was uh, cleared of all criminal wrongdoing with the uh, stuff at San Diego State. You can look into that, but apparently it was just completely falsified. So I'm, I'm ready for Matt Ariza to get a second chance and see what happens in Kansas City. Tommy Townsend. Headed to the Texans. Love that for them. The Raiders get Gardner Minshew. Two years, 25 mil. Going to compete to be the starting quarterback there with Aiden O'Connell. Good to get another face in the room. But the big one for them, of course, you know, bringing back Andre James was really nice. He's developed quite nicely. But Christian Wilkins, huge signing. Four years, 110. Great player. I'm sure the Dolphins were gutted to let him go. He gets close to 85 million. Fully guaranteed. And, man... Such a great player on the interior. Probably a top 10 player at his position. The Raiders really needed something on the interior. This really makes their pass rush fearsome. If you're in the division with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert, you got to put pressure on those guys without having the blitz, especially Patrick Mahomes. Christian Wilkins, Max Crosby, Malcolm Kuntz. Man, this is a nice pass rush developing for the Raiders. I love the addition of Christian Wilkins. Chargers get Gus Edwards, power back, Jim Harbaugh. It makes sense. Will Disley, blocking tight end. It makes sense. And then Aloe Gilman, back two years, $11 million. Good depth in the secondary. Nothing flashy, but you see the identity that's being built there with the Chargers as we move to the NFC. Trent Sieg, long snapper for the Cowboys. Couldn't tell you too much about him. That's it. Giants recently signed Drew Locke. They lose Saquon Barkley, which we'll talk about. They lose Xavier McKinney. I can be fine on all those things. So we'll talk about Drew Locke first. Free agent contract. I think he's making one year $5 million. It's fine. 
He's honestly in contention to be the best thing you have there at quarterback. He's a backup QB. I expect Daniel Jones to be the starter, but you know, the, the gap is not significant there, in my opinion. Daniel Jones is just not great. Drew Locke can actually throw the ball down the field, so we'll see what happens there. Devin Singletary gets, you know, decent money. It was nothing crazy. Three years, 16, I want to say. Three years, 16 and a half. So, Devin Singletary is a fine player, but at five and a half million dollars, it's significantly cheaper than Saquon getting 12 and a half billion. Devin Singletary is obviously not the same player that Saquon is, but based on what you can expect production-wise, he's going to be semi-comparable to what we had with Saquon last year on the Giants, who's a great player. I'm going to miss him. Obviously, one of my favorite players in the league. I hate to see him go to the Eagles, but from a team-building standpoint, it just doesn't make sense to bring back Saquon when you can get Devin Singletary for a fraction of the price and also bring in John Runyon, three years, 30 million. John Runyon Jr., he's going to have to be a starter for the Giants, obviously, with that price tag, 10 million a year. He's fine. You still need to upgrade the O-line in the draft, but Jermaine Illuminor, swing tackle, and play guard, it wouldn't surprise me if he started games at right tackle for the Giants this year. He's a good player. Really enjoyed a breakout with Priscillo as the O-line coach. Where's Priscillo now? Goes from the Raiders to the Giants. This makes a ton of sense to continue his development. He's still like 29 years old, not especially old at O-line. And then the big move, Brian Burns. Trade number 39 overall, a fifth round pick next year and a fifth round pick swap for Brian Burns. You then extend him five years, $150 million with 76 Fully guaranteed at signing, and I think 87 and a half overall. He is a great player. He's a great pass rusher. He's one of the better players on the edge in his uh, in the league. And when you look at the contract, it kind of resets the market. Not a surprise for a, a player of his caliber. He's a really solid option and can be a game wrecker for the Giants. This, along with Dexter Lawrence, will create Brian Burns a lot of one-on-ones. Kayvon Thibodeau, a lot of one-on-ones. That's how you can win. And that's going to create a ton of problems for opposing O-lines. It's a huge upgrade. And if you told me, just from a salary perspective, Devin Singletary plus Brian Burns, all things considered, that's about $35.5 million per year, right? I think right there. Saquon Barkley and Xavier McKinney, who play running back and safety, two you know, undervalued positions based on how the league uh, is going because you got the too high shell. You don't have to be as dynamic in the secondary. And running back is just kind of easier to replace. The lifespan is short. If you can tell me that Brian Burns and Singletary for only five and a half million more or six million more than Saquon Barkley and Xavier McKinney, I would sign up for that. Yes, emotionally as a Giants fan, it stings to lose Saquon Barkley, one of my favorite players in the league. Xavier McKinney. Life of the defense. Didn't miss a snap in 2023. But this is the, the right move for the franchise. A superstar edge is more valuable, in my opinion, than the superstar running back and really solid safety combined. It's just they impact the game way more. They're paid a premium for that impact. If Brian Burns comes out and sucks, okay, then we might talk about this differently. But the same could happen for McKinney and Barkley. This is a gamble absolutely worth taking. You're starting to build your team the right way, and that's on the O-line and on the D-line. Hurts to lose those guys, but I think the Giants did get better yesterday with all their moves, and then Drew Locke today, fine, whatever. Philadelphia Eagles, they were active. Saquon Barkley, three years, $37.75 million. It is a monster deal. We know Saquon's one of the better running backs in the league. Great player. Can really impact the game in so many different ways as a receiver, as a runner. He is dynamic. Obviously, you have the injury problems. He's been plagued by injuries really his entire career. He's a great player when he's on the field, but he got a lot of money. Is he going to end up being worth this as he's, you know, 30 years old at the end of this thing? Maybe, maybe not. But I don't mind the, the, the chance if you're the Eagles because their team overall is already so good. 
You don't get a running back when the team has holes. But if you want to go for the finishing piece, I am all for it. So I hate the Eagles, of course, but I really don't mind the move for them, even though it's a lot of money to give to a, you know, an aging and injury-prone running back. I can't say I'm rooting for him, but I still like the guy, unfortunately, playing on my least favorite team in the league. Albert Okwebenam, a big fan of the Big O. More depth at tight end. Landon Dickerson, careers, $84 million. Been a good piece on that O-line. I think, think he's still going to stick at left guard. I don't think he's going to move back to center. I think Cam Jurgens was drafted for a reason. Jason Kelsey retires. I think Jurgens is probably going to take over as the starting center. Brandon Graham's edge depth. And then Bryce Huff is a monster rotational pass rusher. One of the better pure pass rushers in the NFL right there with a Brian Burns type player. Just not really a three down player. But when you have guys like Brandon Graham, doesn't necessarily have to be. We'll see if Josh Sweat gets traded. We'll see if Hassan Reddick gets traded. But Bryce Huff, Nolan Smith, that's a lot of speed off the edge. That's going to be tough for any offensive line to deal with. And if your team happens to employ Evan Neal, you could be in for a rough time. Julian Okwara, another uh, rotational edge. Sure, why not? Commanders get Marcus Mariota. Why is this interesting? Because stylistically, even though he's not the same player, stylistically, he compares somewhat to Jaden Daniels. Does this mean that the Commanders are going to be targeting Jaden Daniels at number two? It might. It might actually mean that. That's that's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Am I reading into that one a little bit too much? You know, I don't know. I think if you're going to get a free agent quarterback to come in, you're going to try to find one that can seamlessly fit into the offense when your starting quarterback goes down. Also, in practice, you know, getting a mobile guy has value as well. Um, but it's interesting. I don't know if this says for sure that Jaden Daniels, but it, it maybe leans you in that direction a bit. Austin Eckler, two years, 11.43 million. Uh, not a big Austin Eckler guy. I mean, he seems like a nice guy, but as a football player, he's a great receiver. I'm curious if he can really do a lot more than that. Not great in between the tackles. Has definitely lost a step. Just doesn't have that same burst or long speed. I I mean, he's a nice Antonio Gibson replacement as receiver. I don't know if Austin Eckler is going to be their starting running back. I kind of think it's just Brian Robinson and Eckler comes in on third downs. That's kind of my expectation. We'll see. Zach Ertz, I mean, it's fine. You lose Logan Thomas because you cut him. Zach Ertz, I think, could still be solid. Nick Allegretti, three years, 16, O-line depth. Tyler Biotish is I'm a solid center. He follows Dan Quinn to Washington. Three years, 30 million. He'll be the starting center after they cut Nick Gates. Dorrance Armstrong gets three years, 45 million. It's a lot for Dorrance Armstrong. Now he does follow Dan Quinn as well to Washington. He's a solid player, but three years, 45 million for solid is a lot of money. We'll see if he plays up to it. And then Frankie Lubu, I love. Three years, 36 million. Uh, you know, hybrid linebacker can really rush the QB. Awesome player to watch. Love Frankie Lubu. And then you can bring in your new starting kicker in Brandon McManus. NFC North, DeAndre Swift. Three years, 24 mil back to the NFC North from, of course, former Lion. And uh, yeah, man, he's a solid player. He's developed. Of course, it's easy to say that when he's run behind the best O-line in football, behind the Eagles O-line. But we'll see what he looks like with Chicago. I still like Roshan Johnson, Khalil Herbert. You know, Deontay Foreman, we'll see who ends up actually making the team, staying on the team. But Swift is a solid starting option. Brian Bates for a fifth round pick, traded from the Bills. O-line depth, that's totally fine. And then they were able to bring back Jalen Johnson for your $76 million. He's one of the best cornerbacks in the league, no way around it. It's great money for Jalen Johnson, who will become a free agent, still potentially in the prime of his career, and still have the opportunity to make a ton of money. So good on Jalen Johnson. They also brought in Kevin Byard, two years, 15. Not the same player he used to be. Wasn't particularly great with the Eagles. See what he can do in Chicago. And then brought back their long snapper. Lions, of course, bring back Graham Glasgow. No, he really wanted to stay in Detroit. He gets three years, 20 million. He'll be a starting guard for them probably. 
uh, you'd have to expect, right? You know, really solid player. Again, I played Counter Strike with him last night. Wild, um, wildly random, it feels like. But yeah, super nice guy, super solid player. I know he really wanted to stay in Detroit. Good on both sides there. They lose Jonah Jackson. It was important to keep Glasgow in Detroit for sure. They brought in Marcus Davenport on a one year deal. Davenport always is going to be this big upside guy. We'll see if he really puts it all together. And on that Lions D-line, he has the opportunity to do that, right? Aiden Hutchinson, Aleem McNeil. They've got some good players. See if, you know, how often Josh Pascal plays, for example. But Davenport, starter upside. Jalen Reeves-Maben, great special teamer. Back, gets a two-year deal worth up to eight mil. Carlton Davis, traded. Gets a sixth rounder, uh, or two in 2024 and 2025. And a third round pick. So... This is interesting. So the Bucks get the third, the Lions get sixth rounders and Carlton Davis. Carlton Davis is good. Here's my main issue with Carlton Davis is how often he plays. And if you look at the actual games played, it is, I mean, he's never played a full season. And in the past three seasons, he really hasn't even come that close. It, like 13 out of 17, 12 out of 17. I think it would have been 10 out of 16 at this time, right? It is just, he's, you know, somewhat injury prone, obviously. And I think in a contract year as well. So they better hope he stays healthy. He can be good, but seemed like the odd man out in Tampa. Lions take him off the Bucks. Emmanuel Mosley, back, fine player. And then today they brought in Amik Robertson who is, you know, an undersized slot corner, but a good special team potential and good depth at corner and then brought back the Money Badger on a one-year deal. Packers, wow. They cut Aaron Jones. He's headed to the Vikings, who we'll talk about in a minute. But bring in Josh Jacobs, the surprise, really, a free agency, one of them. Four years, $48 million. He's a really great player. Can run in between the tackles, can catch the football. Versatile. He's like... A slightly upgraded Aaron Jones who's younger, right? So can't hate that. Aaron Jones is so great though. Maybe the best running back in Packers history. Go back to Paul Horning maybe, but modern running back, it's probably Amon Green and then Aaron Jones one and two, right? So maybe even Aaron Jones is purely number one. Josh Jacobs, really, really solid player. See what this looks like. Four years, 48 million is a, a, a real big deal, but he is probably worth it. One of the better running backs in the league. And uh, see what he looks like in Green Bay. And then Xavier McKinney gets four years, 68 million, 25 in year one. It's 17 million per year. Xavier McKinney is a really solid player. Can play over the top. I like him better as a strong safety. I like him when he's in the box a little bit more. At least I did more at Alabama. Uh, but is shown to be versatile for the Giants. He doesn't miss snaps. Team captain type player. Love Xavier McKinney. Wish him the best of luck in Green Bay. It's a lot of money. $17 million per year, though, for not one of the best safeties in the league. Maybe he becomes that player. Still quite young. He's only 24 years old. So it could definitely happen, and this could end up being a great contract. I don't think it's bad right now. It's certainly not a steal, I don't believe, by any means. And then the Vikings. Wow. Sam Darnold, one year, $10 million. That looks to be their starting quarterback if they can't move up for one in the draft. Aaron Jones, one year, $7 million. Great value. He's a really great player. And I love that he gets to go against the Packers. You know, just some good depth pickups. Otherwise, until we get to Jonathan Grenard, emerging player. Nice season for the Texans. He's been a good player for the Texans anyway. Four years, $76 million. High upside. I mean... You are losing a lot on the edge, but you're definitely getting good return back. Neil Hunter, it'll be interesting to see where he goes, but getting Jonathan Grenard and then Andrew Van Ginkle, that's a fun combo. Grenard has big time potential. We've seen AVG do it for a couple of years now. Kind of like the hybrid linebacker, uh, edge type player. Really like AVG. And then Blake Cashman's going to play off the ball. He's been a good player as well. Another Texan, really solid option. And then I don't know much about John Parker Romo. I remember hearing his name in the draft a couple of years ago as a potential guy, but don't know much about him. And while we're here, there's also a new report that the Texans 
have interest in Daniil Hunter. And apparently it's mutual interest, but nothing is going to happen just now, apparently. But uh, Jonathan Grenard and Daniil Hunter swapping teams is certainly very interesting if that ends up being the case. In the NFC South, Kirk Cousins to the Falcons. This was the big combine rumor. This guy gets a ton of guaranteed money every time. I don't know how he does it. Best agent in the world. Kirk Cousins is good. Huge upgrade at QB, no question. This offense might actually look formidable in 2024. A lot of money for Kirk Cousins, but this was what he was always going to get. And the way the contract appears to be structured as well, it's really not a four-year lock-in. I wouldn't be worried about it. It is fine for Kirk Cousins. It really is. And then Darnell Mooney. Wide receiver, two upside. Still could draft one, but good deep threat. Three years, 39 mil. You guys know I love Darnell Mooney. Money with two O's. Took a step back in 2023, but obviously the offense was just so bad that it's understandable. Panthers get Robert Hunt. Five years, 100 million. This was maybe the overpay of free agency, I would say. It's just so much money for Robert Hunt. He's a really solid player. He's a he's a good right guard. Has maybe tackle flexibility if you need it, which you don't really if you're the Panthers. You have Taylor Moten out there, but Robert Hunt is definitely good. Five years, $100 million, you're paying for way better than just good. But of course, you know, these contracts are getting more and more expensive. They're trying to protect, uh, protect Bryce Young. I don't hate it. Damien Lewis gets four years, $53 million. I think that's totally fine. Damien Lewis is also a solid player. Young left guard. And it sounds like Austin Corbett's going to move to center. Your offensive line seems solidified then. If, if Austin Corbett can play center, if Iki Aquanu can play even better at left tackle, had some ups and downs last year. We know Moten's a great player. Hunt and Lewis are solid. So your O-line is solidified. You need some receivers. You need some receivers badly. You could still even draft a center, to be honest. If Zach Frazier's there at 33 or 39 via the Giants, you might consider Zach Frazier, the West Virginia center. Certainly could see that. They bring in uh, Troy Hill back on a one-year deal. And of course, they're long snapper as well. But the two big signings were left guard and right guard. Right guard, Robert Hunt. Left guard, Damian Lewis. Try and finish off that offensive line. Saints get Demario Davis back in a two-year deal. He's old. He's still one of the best linebackers in football. Great player. Tyron Matthew back two years, 13 and a half million or 13 and three quarter million, which sounds weird to say. Uh, old, but still pretty good. I don't hate it for the Saints. They haven't been super active, but they're, they don't really have a ton of money. So it kind of makes sense. And then for the Bucks, big free agency for them, just bringing back their guys. Antoine Winfield had to get franchise tagged, of course, but Mike Evans, two years, 52 million. I hope he retires as a Buck. One of their best players of all time. Love Mike Evans on the Bucks. Good deal for him. And then Baker Mayfield. Three years, 100 mil, 30 guaranteed in year one. Baker's good. I've been on the Baker train for years. He got a, a rough deal in Cleveland. He had four different coaches in three years, if you count interim head coaches. That's a tough environment for a young quarterback, especially with a franchise without a history of QB success or any success of any kind, really, unless you go back to Jim Brown. and uh, Okay, Bernie Kosar, maybe a bit in the 80s, but you know, the Browns had some tough times. 90s, 2000s, viciously bad teams. 2010s obviously didn't stop. And Baker couldn't reset that. He almost won Offensive Rookie of the Year in 2018, but I just think he had a rough go of it. And mechanically, after an injury, he got a little bit off started being less accurate, playing less well. But the potential was always there. And I'm I'm happy for Baker to realize that potential in Tampa. He is a good player. The fact that he's making less than Daniel Jones makes me upset. Because I would have loved Baker to be the quarterback for the Giants over Daniel Jones. And it's not the case. Cardinals. Bring back Tristan Colon, O-line depth. Justin Jones, D-line depth. Mac Wilson could potentially be a starter for the Cardinals. And then they bring in Sean Murphy Bunting. Maybe you're starting nickel. Uh, we'll see if he plays on the outside. Three years, $25.5 million. Nothing super flashy. Cardinals, they're not a great team. But getting two potential starters, maybe even three, I guess, with Justin Jones. Uh, he's probably going to end up starting on the interior. 
it's not the worst. That's a lot of money for Justin Jones, but he's fine, I guess. Rams bring back Demarcus Robinson. Colby Parkinson gets a big deal. Three years, $22.5 million. He's solid depth at tight end. Kevin Dotson's brought back. He enjoyed a big breakout season with the Rams last year. And then they bring in Jonah Jackson. Now you have your left guard and right guard absolutely solidified. Jonah Jackson deal looks like a steal based on the Robert Hunt contract. Three years, $51 million. He might have been the best available guard in free agency to begin with. So O-line gets better. Tackle, still a problem. Still a big problem for the Rams, but guard is solidified. And then they bring back Darius Williams. Of course, he went to the Jags for a season or two, but back with the Rams now. Solid player. And it's not like he's going back to the same defensive coordinator because Raheem Morris is now with the Falcons, but, you know, maybe he rents his old apartment and uh, feels at home, plays well. Gotta love it. 49ers bring in Brandon Allen. Colton McKivitz is brought back. Leonard Floyd got brought in. Yeah, he's fine. Good rotational edge, two years, 20 million. Uh, not a game wrecker by any means, but a solid player. Her gross Matos has athletic potential. Hasn't really done much with Carolina. So he gets two years, 18 mil. And then George Odom, he's been a good special teamer for a while now. Um, of course, was with the Colts. Gets two years, up to 10 mil. Didn't do anything crazy here. And there are rumors that Debo Samuel could be traded. I'm interested to see if anything happens with that. And then the last team, Seattle Seahawks. Noah Fant brought back two years, 21 million. Solid starting tight end. And then Leonard Williams, of course, you kind of had to resign. He should traded for him, trying to make that push from the Giants. Traded a second round pick. You extend him to a monster contract. Three years, 64 and a half million. He's a really solid player as well. Seems like a little bit much, but he's a really solid player. It's just a lot of money, but he's also a great fit in the Mike McDonald defense. So I really don't hate it, but it's a lot of money. We have to be aware of that. But that is free agency day one and into day two breakdown for every team. Thank you so much for watching. I know long video, but I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.